Hello everyone, as you know my name is Daniel Fernandez, I'm the owner of scienceinhydroponics.com and today is our last video about our Kratky tomato project where I took a tomato plant, grew it in a Kratky setup and measured a lot of variables through the entire lifetime of the plant. So in this video you are going to see how the project continued, how the harvest went and how the plant died. <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay guys, so this was the plant during the beginning of July. This was when we started harvesting tomatoes. We had already harvested like a dozen by now. And you can see the tomatoes forming there and you can see that I pruned all the lower canopy to allow for some airflow. However, we did have some problems with abortions in the flowers because as you, you can see only like two or three tomatoes at most per cluster when there should be probably five or six and the number of clusters is also lower because we didn't have enough airflow. Here you have roots forming on the stem because of the higher humidity. At this point the plant was increasing the humidity to almost 70 percent or 80 percent so we did have some root formation there. So overall fruit formation was not very good. The fruits that formed were fine but we did have a lot of flower abortions. You can now see a flower of the plant here and you can see that the clusters develop usually two to five flowers and you also can see that the canopy coverage was pretty complete. This is the Mycoto server where, where I registered the data for the Cherry Tomato Kratky project. The project started during the middle of April and ended during the middle of July so there were three months of data collection. You can see here the EC and pH data for the entire crop cycle. The project started with um, a solution up until the edge of the net pods and the EC dropped and I only needed to start replenishing it around a month later. Then I needed to replenish the solution basically once every four days from there until the end of the crop cycle because tomatoes are pretty good at evaporating water because they're entire because they have a lot of leaf surface area and they could cover the entire area I had the canopy fully filled the space so they evaporated a lot of water and you can see that in the demand for constant changes. So every time you see a climb in EC, that's when I replenished solution and then the plant did not uptake as much water as it did nutrients. So the EC dropped consistently, um, but so did the water volume within the tank. Although I do not have a measurement for water volume and that is a measurement that I want to implement in the future. We only had one single failure of the EC sensor here in around the beginning of June, just for four days but then it was fixed just by restarting the Arduino. And then I also played with some changes to the nutrient strength because I was seeing the EC drop. So at one point I even did a big EC increase to 3.6 and the plant still dropped the EC quite dramatically and took all those nutrients in. So you can see that. And then what happened was that in the during the middle of July, I was quite busy, didn't have the time, forgot about replenishing this and it just dried up and the tomato wilted and basically died because it couldn't recover from this because it wilted it lost rigidity and it basically collapsed so a lot of the branches broke and that was the end of the project as you will see in the pictures and videos that we recorded about the death of my poor tomato plant so you can see here uh, in the temperature and uh, humidity log basically that a plant acts like a swamp cooler so in the beginning you have low humidity and high temperature and then as the plant grows it basically normalizes the temperature so it lowers it and it increases the relative humidity acting as a swamp cooler and you can see that these sensors the bme 280 that i used to register this the humidity and the temperature failed like several times and even here it failed for quite a long time. So I need to find a way to actually reinitialize the sensor without reinitializing the Arduino because it is quite common. It happened like four or five times that the sensors failed and I only um, restarted them when I realized that this was a problem. Now, the measurements of nitrogen, potassium and calcium, I really didn't take too many after the last video you saw 
because I sadly didn't have the time to take those measurements. Those measurements take quite a bit of time because I need to manually sample. And it became quite difficult to pick up the plant to sample those. So I think I will need to figure out some sort of sample port and perhaps a way to automate that measurement in the future. Although I will probably need some ion selective electrodes to actually do that. So that is something to improve the Kratky setup. So yeah, sadly, I don't have that data, but I hope to gather more consistent data next time I run into a Kratky experiment. So tomatoes, as you see here, great at uptaking a lot of water. This bucket was around 11, 12 liters, between 11 and 12 liters. And I needed to, of course, I didn't fill it to the top every time because you need in a Kratky setup to leave space for oxygen. So you need those air roots. So I filled it to have more or less half the volume every time. So this tomato plant basically consumed around one liter per day, which is around what you would expect for a tomato plant of this size. So this is a reason why having plants in a Kratky setup is not the greatest idea, having these big plants, because managing them becomes a pain. As you see here, I had to constantly manage this. I only did one entire solution change. So most of these changes are basically just changes in the nutrient solution where I added new solution in. So I prepared new solution and added it to the solution that was already there, but I didn't actually um, clean it the entire thing. And every time I did this, I only cleaned it one time, which was around the beginning of June. So it was around this time when this happened, like this change. I completely replenished the solution. Uh, so I completely dumped it and put in new one. This was hard to do because the plant was already pretty big. So manipulating the entire root system, taking the bucket out, dumping the water and putting new water in was problematic. So if you wanna grow a large plant doing Kratky, then it is definitely recommendable to have some sort of piping so that you can drain the solution and put new solution in without having to manipulate the root system too much. Right now I have restarted the Kratky setup and I'm doing some basal. So I hopefully will update you on how that is going within in the near future. So this taught us, this taught me a lot about monitoring these Kratky setups, doing monitoring all these variables. In the future, of course, I want to add oxygen uh, sensors. I also want to add a sensor to determine the level and possibly ion selective electrodes so that I don't need to monitor all these nutrients manually. This is when the plant died. You can see here that there wasn't enough water, the plant wilted, and a lot of the branches broke because the plant was very heavy. So there was no way we could recover the plant from here. The root system was pretty healthy though. It was a bit stained by the fertilizer dyes, but it was very healthy. Sadly, the fact that you need to water very often, that to rewater very often made it very hard to upkeep given how busy I was. So as you've seen, we were able to successfully grow a tomato plant in a Kratky setup. You saw all the, how the, all the variables evolved through time and you saw the ultimate demise of our poor tomato plant. We learned a lot of things through this project though. We learned about the nutritional demands of tomato plants. We learned about their water demands. And we saw why this is not such an optimal setup for a large tomato plant. However, you saw that it can be done and that you can grow a pretty massive tomato plant using a Kratky setup if you're willing to spend the time managing it. Now, as a conclusion to this project, well, I'm also going to show you on a following video how to create a nutrient solution that is adapted to the Kratky setup according to the results that we obtained. So stay tuned for that result. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one and bye-bye.